Hi, I'm Ian. Thanks for tuning in to another episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we're here in our part of our reference collection. We've got another interesting rifle to take a look at. We have a Manlicker Model 1901 carbine today. Most of the early automatic pistols were sold uh, either as pistols or as carbines, either by, in often cases both, by having removable shoulder stocks that could be used with the handgun version of the firearm, or as complete carbine variants that didn't have a standard pistol grip and instead had a, a typical wood stock on them. The Manlicker 1901 is uh, kind of like this. They were available both as a handgun, a handgun with a detachable shoulder stock, and also as a carbine, with, in this case, a 12-inch barrel and a, a complete fixed uh, wooden buttstock. So disassembly of the Manlicker carbine starts with this tab right here. There are a couple different versions of this. Um, this is actually an early prototype of this particular gun. Um, the production ones had a, a disassembly notch that was shaped a little differently and actually hidden inside the receiver a bit. On this one, we pull this all the way back. And the entire trigger assembly and uh, magazine housing comes out as a single unit. Once that's done, the upper assembly of the gun slides right off. That's a basic field stripped display of this particular gun. You do have to have the hammer cocked to disassemble it. The locking piece here is held in place by a single pin. It's not threaded or anything, it's just pushed out. And the locking piece drops out of the upper receiver. Once the locking piece is removed, you still have the bolt in here under spring pressure. The way to remove this is simply to pull it back until the handle is right here and then the whole thing drops down. Just like that. When this is inside the bolt, even at full extension, there's very little loose spring available. That's a good feature. Uh, most of the other pistols of this era had a lot more spring uh, accessible like that and were a lot more prone to kinked recoil springs. On this, a little bend in the spring isn't going to hurt anything because there's so little space available for it to kink. So here's the bolt and the, the locking piece inside the upper receiver. And this is in a locked position right now. You see that this locking piece is flush up against the bolt. What happens when this reciprocates is that the locking piece is forced downward and the bolt slides back on top of it. When the bolt comes all the way forward, the locking piece is forced up against it again. Thus, as long as the upper receiver of the gun is under spring pressure and being pushed forward, uh, the bolt remains locked. So this is the configuration of all the parts internally when the gun's locked and ready to fire without the frame around it. And what you can see, the locking lug uh, is held up by the bottom frame of the gun and it's holding the bolt in place. When the slide and bolt rotate backwards, it pushes this locking lug down and allows the bolt to travel rearward. When this comes forward, everything is pushed back up into a locked position again. One element that the Manlicker has uh, that was a bit unusual for its time was that everything is contained within the receiver of the gun. You can see the back end here is entirely closed off and the bolt travels entirely within the receiver. Compare that to something like a broom handle Mauser, you can see how far back the bolt cycles every time you fire. Without, with, with having a system like this, there's always a, a slim potential that if something breaks, this bolt goes shooting back through your forehead. And even if not, it's a good entry point for dirt and debris and just generally not uh, real elegant engineering. So compared to its most common competitor at the time, the C96 Mauser, you can see that the Manlicker is shorter overall. It has a shorter bolt on it. Um, obviously nothing extrudes out the back of, of the Manlicker. Um, this is just overall a very compact, very convenient, very cute little gun. 
The safety notch is back here. This catch is pushed up and forward to engage the safety. Very simply and ambidextrous, uh, snap it back down to fire. The other interesting control you'll see on the Manlicker is uh, this lever. That is actually directly connected to the hammer. So this allows you to recock the gun uh, without messing with the bolt. If you have a light strike, simply pushing that down recocks the hammer. Now, this, the, the carbine version of the Manlicker was available with a 12-inch long barrel here. Um, and really a, a standard size, maybe a little bit shorter than normal shoulder stock. Comparing that to an M1 carbine, generally regarded to be a very compact, convenient light rifle, you can see it's significantly smaller. Um, accuracy on the, the Manlicker was actually remarkably good. Um, the one, the one caveat to it is the barrel does recoil as part of the action, so you really have to hold uh, the magazine well instead of holding the forend. If you would like to know a little more about these guns and you happen to speak German, um, we do have a copy of one of the original manuals scanned and available on Forgotten Weapons. Uh, we'll be adding anything extra we can find on Manlicker handguns and carbines as well as time goes. We hope you enjoyed the, uh, the episode. If you ever run across one of these, now you'll know how it works and how to take it apart. Thanks for watching.